running for their party's presidential nomination. There are some disagreements between them, but one thing many of them appear to agree on is wholeheartedly embracing the foreign policy agenda of Bill Kristol. Whether it's Syria or Venezuela or Russia, if there's an opportunity for the United States to sponsor a violent conflict somewhere in the world, they support it. The only exception to this is Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii. She's a sincere progressive. She is a veteran, and she says she wants to keep America out of pointless foreign wars. And for that, she has been repeatedly attacked in Washington. Congressman Gabbard joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks very much for coming on. I know that you have been criticized for straying out of approved media outlets. I'm sure you'll be criticized for coming on the show tonight. I just want to reassure Democratic voters that we disagree on many, many, probably most things. <laughs> you're a sincere progressive. But one place that I admire your courage is your unwillingness to go along with the foreign policy views of everyone else in Washington. And you really have been attacked for it. Why do you think that is? Uh, oh, look, Tucker, I am a soldier in the Army National Guard. I've served now for nearly 15 years, served on two Middle East deployments, uh, and I know personally firsthand the cost of war. Uh, in Congress now for over the last six years, I've served on the Foreign Affairs Committee as well as the Armed Services Committee, and I have seen how uh, self-serving, powerful politicians from both parties uh, have continued this um, foreign policy regime change uh, war view uh, where they think that we, the United States, should be acting as the policemen of the world and that we should continue to go around and overthrowing and toppling dictators or, or countries who we don't like, uh, costing us, the American people, trillions of dollars in the process, uh, causing more suffering in the countries where we go and wage these wars, and, oh, by the way, undermining our own national security as we are seeing playing out before our eyes in countries like North Korea. Yes. Where Kim Jong-un... Uh, has clearly stated that he is holding on to these nuclear weapons as his only deterrent against the United States coming in and waging a regime change war in North Korea. So while you know I'm deeply concerned about the fact that this summit yesterday uh, ended without a, a, an agreement because we, we need to see denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, it's not surprising because of this uh, policy, this regime change war policy that, again, leaders in both parties in the foreign policy establishment here in Washington have perpetuated over and over and over again. What's so interesting is that that worldview, the regime change worldview, I mean, if it worked, I, at one time I thought it sounded like it made sense, but we've had almost 20 years of it and it demonstrably hasn't worked and there's really kind of no debate about how badly it's gone. Why would people still support that? That's a great question. You know, it's if you look at the, the military industrial complex that benefits off of uh, these continued regime change wars, uh, you look at those in Washington who's uh, have invested their entire careers built on continuing to wage these wars. And the most unfortunate thing is they sell them under the guise of humanitarianism to the American people who want to be able to do good things, who want to be able to help people who are suffering but not pointing out the fact and not facing the truth that in each of these different examples of regime change led by the United States, it has resulted in far more suffering for the people who they're supposedly trying to help. Now, there's a lot of different motives for this. You can look at corporate greed. You can look at who actually benefits financially yes. uh, from these wars if you want to see why they're continuing and why it perpetuates again by self-serving powerful politicians and leaders uh, in both parties. Has anyone, no, you've been attacked quite a bit, and I'm not going to make you relive it, including by some people I know who would, should know better, to be honest with yeah. you. But nobody has engaged you in the argument you just made, and so they've dismissed you as sucking up to this dictator, you're a bad person, is basically what they're saying. Has anybody actually debated you on the points that you're making? No. No. Constantly I see, uh, again, people from both parties instead uh, resorting to name-calling or superficial attacks because uh, they refuse to engage on the substance of this argument about why they continue to uh, push for and try to wage these regime change wars, ignoring the disastrous consequences on the people in those countries and the American people. The reality is these, these wars are costing us, the taxpayers, trillions of dollars, dollars that should be here that should remain in our pockets are invested in things like uh, rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure, exactly. invested in the needs of our people. I just want to say again, just to be totally clear, 
We disagree on many things, but I admire your bravery for saying that out loud, and you are always welcome on the show. I appreciate your coming. Thanks, Thank Tucker. you very much. Appreciate it. The other night, we warned you.